I'm Chef Janet and I'm a gluten-free chef. I work with people in their homes teaching them how to cook gluten-free. So many of my clients are looking for meals that don't take a whole lot of time to prepare. So I've got a long list of recipes that can be done in less time, well, than it takes you to watch a 30-minute sitcom. In fact, my gluten-free chicken fajita recipe can be done in 22 minutes. Don't believe it? Well, come with me and I'll show you step by step all the way how to get it done. Are you ready to get started? Come on, let's go. As you can see, I've gathered all my tools and all the ingredients I'll need and put them right in one spot by the stove and the sink. This way, I don't have to steal precious minutes from my preparation time running around the kitchen. So now that I've got all of my ingredients and my tools ready to go, we'll get started. I've put my veggies in this over the sink basket that I like to use. We can just give them a quick shower to get them rinsed off. And then they'll sit here and drain while we're working on other things. I do like to get my cilantro wrapped up in a paper towel just to absorb some of the excess water. It needs kind of a head start getting dry because it's pretty hard to work with wet cilantro. So we'll let that dry and move on to the spices. We're going to use a half a teaspoon each of paprika, cumin, chili powder, garlic, uh, powder or garlic, granulated garlic. Be sure that it's just plain garlic and not garlic salt, otherwise your fajitas will be too salty. Granulated onion. And if you like a little bit of kick to your fajitas, feel free to add a couple of pinches of red chili flakes. And then finally, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. I like to use diamond crystal kosher salt. Kosher salts do have different levels of saltiness, so diamond crystal has a nice level of saltiness and a half a teaspoon does the trick. We'll give it a stir, set it aside, and move on to get, getting the beans ready. I've got uh, kidney beans here. You can also use pinto beans or black beans, whichever kind you like. We're gonna get them drained. I've just put my fine mesh drainer over my sink basket. I'm gonna drain out the liquid that came with the beans and give them a rinse because we really don't want the liquid that came with the beans. We'll leave those here to drain and move on to the next step. Now we're ready to start preparing the vegetables. I've got a red and a yellow bell pepper here because it's nice to mix up the colors. You're gonna start out by just taking a thin slice off the top of the pepper. We wanna get rid of the stem and create a nice flat surface on top. And then do the same thing on the bottom. Just take a nice thin slice off the bottom. This is gonna make it easier to cut the pepper into strips. You can save these pieces for a salad or a soup later on. Then you'll turn the pepper on its side and you're gonna run your knife right around the inside, just cutting out the ribs. Just go all the way around the inside. And then stand the pepper up on its bottom. Take a slice down, open it up, and now it's real easy to pull out the seeds and the ribs. And now we've got a nice straight edge to cut strips. Just pull those fingers out of the way and start slicing some nice thin strips. So my peppers are all ready to go and I'm gonna get them put aside in that medium sized serving bowl that we pulled out earlier and we'll move on to the onion. We're gonna use a red onion because it adds another nice pop of color to the fajitas. I'm just gonna use a half an onion. I've got this pretty big one but if you like a lot of onion feel free to use as much as you want. I'm gonna pull off the outer layer of skin on the onion, and then we'll get it cut into nice thin slices that will work well inside a tortilla. Lay it on its side. I've already cut off the stem end. I'm gonna cut off the root end, and now just work your way from one side to the other, making nice thin slices of onion. Now would also be a good time to get the pan on the stove. We wanna get a really beautiful sear on our veggies and our chicken. So get it on the stove on a high heat so that it's ready to go when our veggies are all cut. My pan is almost hot, but meanwhile, I'm gonna get the limes and the cilantro ready. The paper towel's done the trick nicely of absorbing the excess water. So I'm just gonna rip off a fistful of cilantro right, right off the top. No need to use your knife for that. Lay it on the cutting board and we're just gonna break it up 
don't have to chop it real fine. It's just got to be broken up enough to go nicely as a garnish over our fajitas. Get your cilantro into that small soup bowl that we pulled out earlier. And now we'll cut those two limes right in half, not through the stem end, but right down the equator. So your lime looks like this. And it's looking like my pan is pretty hot. So I'm gonna coat the bottom with just a little bit of oil and get my peppers and onions going. I've got a sizzling hot pan, so I'm ready to throw in the veggies. We'll just pour in all the peppers and onions. And you hear that sizzle? That tells us that we're gonna get nice color on our veggies. Just give them a quick stir. Get them spread out on the pan, and we're just gonna let them sit there and cook for a while while we get the chicken ready. My peppers are sizzling away in the pan, and meanwhile, I'm gonna get some other things done. If you've got chicken tenders, you might wanna give them a cut in half just to make sure you've got nice bite-sized pieces for your fajitas. If you've got whole chicken breast, you want to get that cut up into nice thin strips. I had a really thick chicken breast, so I laid mine flat on the, on the cutting board and cut it right down through the middle to get a nice thin piece to work with. I've cut the first half into strips, and I'm going to get the next half cut into strips as well. And while I'm cutting my chicken, I'm also going to be sure that I give those peppers and onions a toss or a stir every so often to make sure that they cook nice and evenly. So my veggies are looking pretty good. They've got a little bit of color on them, and they're just about done. So I want to be sure that I flavor every layer of this dish. So we're going to add a good teaspoon of that seasoning we mixed up earlier onto these fajitas. Give them a stir, and we just want to let them cook for a little bit so that we don't taste raw spices. You always want to give a little bit of time for your spices to heat up and also intensify their flavor. These veggies look really good, so I'm gonna get them back into that medium-sized serving bowl and get the pan ready to put the chicken in. My pan is still good and hot from having cooked the peppers and onions. I've added just a little bit of a coating of oil onto the pan, and I'm just gonna pull the cutting board right over here Use my knife to slide the chicken right into the pan. And you're hearing that nice sizzle. You know that the chicken's gonna get a nice color on it. And again, that color means flavor. We'll just let it sit on this one side and give it a toss once it's done. My chicken got some really nice color on the first side, so I gave it a toss. And now it's time to start adding some flavor. We're gonna add in the remainder of the seasoning that we mixed up earlier and give it a stir. Now we've got some spice, and we've got some salty in here. It's a good idea to add a little bit of tang or some sour. You want to hit as many taste buds as you can. I've got my half a lime and a fork. I'm going to give it a squeeze, and then if you just twist the fork inside the lime a little bit, it helps to really pull out all of the juice. We'll get both of those halves of the lime squeezed into the chicken. Give it another stir, and we're almost done. So the last thing we need to do is get the tortillas heated up. I like to save myself time walking around the kitchen to heat it up in some other place. So I just turn on another burner, take my whole stack of tortillas, and throw it directly onto the burner. It sounds crazy, but trust me, it works. Flip it over, and then take the top tortilla, flip it over so you can get that side hot, and then just keep turning and flipping until your entire stack is hot. And then what I do is I put them on that dinner plate that we pulled out earlier. I put the dinner plate on top of the bowl of peppers and onions. It's creating a little bit of heat from underneath. It's gonna keep those tortillas warm. My chicken looks really good, so I think there's only one thing left to do, and that's call everybody over and have them put together their own fajitas. I like to top my, my tortilla with first a leaf of lettuce. It gives it a really nice crunch. And then spoon on the chicken, some beans, some guacamole, 
and then maybe an extra squeeze of lime and cilantro and you've got a perfect bite. I hope you enjoy these 22 minute gluten free fajitas. I'll see you next time. Find this recipe and more on my website at chefjanakay.com. Thanks again.